Welcome to the first LEGO League Challenge Spring 2021 season in the city of Philadelphia. I'm Michael Johnson, Executive Director of the Philadelphia Robotics Coalition, a nonprofit organization that supports competitive robotics programming for Philadelphia public school students in order to build equity and opportunity in STEM education. Robotics, like every aspect of our lives, looks very different this year than ever before but we will rise to the challenge and ensure that STEM learning opportunities don't disappear for our students. In this video, I'll explain the priorities that guided us as we crafted this season plan. I'll acknowledge the partners we're working with to make this season a reality. I'll explain the modifications we've made to the first LEGO League Challenge season and tournament in Philadelphia, and I'll explain the registration process. This video does not address First Lego League Explore, which was formerly called First Lego League Junior. As we formulated our 2021 season plan, we focused on making modifications that would maximize the number of students, teachers, and schools actively participating in the First Lego League Challenge program. We built in flexibility that would allow teams to transition from remote to hybrid to in-person meetings at any time with a minimal disruption. And we made an effort to streamline the requirements of the competition to lower barriers to entry and participation. The School District of Philadelphia coaches participated in a town hall meeting in late fall to review our draft plan and offer feedback before we published this final version of the plan. First Lego League Challenge in Philadelphia is made possible through the efforts of several partner organizations. The Philadelphia Robotics Coalition takes a leading role in supporting robotics teams and events in our city. The coalition partners with the robotics teams of Central High School to produce Philadelphia robotics events. The majority of First Lego League Challenge teams in our city are based at School District of Philadelphia schools. The district provides funding and support for its teachers and students through the Office of Gifted and Talented Programs. First Mid-Atlantic, is the first affiliate partner for First Lego League in our region, providing administrative, logistical, and technical support for teams and events. While First Lego League Challenge kicked off globally in August 2020, we elected to postpone our Philadelphia kickoff until January 2021, when we would be well practiced in meeting and teaching virtually. Our expectation is that teams will begin to meet this month. Our season will end with the Philadelphia FLL tournament on Saturday, May 1st. Postponing our season compared with the rest of the world gave us much more control and flexibility, but the trade-off we made is that our event will be too late to participate in the global qualifier and advancement process. In other words, our Philadelphia tournament will not be advancing any teams to a regional or world championship event. Teams are eligible to participate in the Philadelphia FLL tournament if they meet two criteria. First, they must be registered First Lego League Challenge teams in good standing with First and First Mid-Atlantic. This means that they've paid their 2020-2021 registration fees to First, and that they have two adults registered with First as lead coach mentor who have passed First's Youth Protection Program screening. Second, teams must serve Philadelphia public school students. Eligible teams either are based at Philadelphia district or public charter schools, or have a majority of student participants who are currently enrolled in a Philadelphia district or public charter school. As in prior years, exceptions to this requirement will be offered on a case-by-case -case basis to other teams that also serve underrepresented student populations. We expect that the Philadelphia FLL tournament will be a fully remote event. Judging will take place via video conference on afternoons and evenings during the last week of April. Teams will submit robot match videos to the referees during the last two weeks of April, and awards will be announced via live stream on the afternoon of Saturday, May 1st. The challenge itself is called Replay and was released worldwide in August. If you haven't seen it yet, you can access challenge materials at firstinspires.org. In Philadelphia, we will follow the challenge materials from FIRST, except for the modifications we'll now explain. Let's start with judging. 
In a typical competition, teams must participate in all three judging areas, core values, the innovation project, and robot design. In our modified competition, teams must participate in at least two of the three judging areas. In a typical competition, teams must complete all judging and robot matches to be considered for any award. In our modified competition, teams must complete all the judging and robot matches that they select at registration in order to be considered for any award. And teams will only be considered for awards in the areas they competed in. In a typical competition, each team can only win one award with the exception of robot performance awards, which are based solely on match scores. This restriction is unchanged. In a typical competition, the team that performs the best in all categories of competition earns the champions award. Since not all teams will be participating in all areas of the competition, a champions award winner will not be selected at the Philadelphia FLL tournament this year. Judging for the innovation project and core values will run the same as usual, except the judging sessions will be conducted via video conference rather than in person. Robot design judging, on the other hand, has been adjusted to make it more flexible, allowing teams to participate even if they cannot meet in person. In a typical competition, teams present a built robot. But in our modified tournament, teams can present a built robot, robot designs in drawings or CAD, virtual robots coded to compete virtual versions of the challenge missions in Scratch, or some combination thereof. Judges will be impartial to teams' ability to access technology or physical kits. In a typical competition, teams are expected to produce a completed robot. In our modified tournament, teams can present a whole robot or just a robot module or modules. In a typical competition, robots must be built entirely from Lego parts. While this remains true for built robots and modules, in our modified competition, teams who are designing or simulating robots or modules without building them are not limited to, to Lego parts. Perhaps the most dramatic modification we've made is in the robot performance area. Robot matches are optional. In fact, building a robot at all is optional. Here's why. If students on your team cannot meet together and work together in person, we don't think that they can build and code and test a robot together. First LEGO League Challenge is a team competition, not an individual competition. So we are not interested in seeing robots that were built, coded, and tested by individual students, or especially adults, instead of a team of students together. For teams who are able to participate in robot matches, we will use the remote match guidelines created by First Mid-Atlantic. Please refer to the First Mid-Atlantic website and email blasts for details. Let's take a look at three examples for how a team could approach the season. Our first team, the Zumbies, only meets virtually. They decide to complete the innovation project. And at the tournament, they participate in project and core values judging via Zoom. They don't do any robot designing or building. The Zumbies are eligible to win an award in the project or core values categories. Our next team, Virtual Reality Team, is also a fully virtual team. They design robot modules using a computer drawing program, and they draft code for two missions in the challenge. Since they are fully virtual, they can't build anything. At the tournament, they participate in robot design judging, showing drawings of their modules and explaining their code. They also participate in core values judging. Virtual Reality Team is eligible to win an award in the robot design or core values categories. Our third team, CoRoboVirus, is based at a school that has transitioned to a hybrid learning model, allowing some in-person team meetings to build and code a robot. At the tournament, they participate in remote matches, robot design judging, and core values judging via Zoom. 
they decide that they don't have bandwidth to compete the project. Team Corobovirus is eligible to win an award in the robot design or core values judging categories or a robot performance award. Now, these aren't the only options and perhaps the most obvious option that I left out is a team that is able to meet in person and compete in all four areas as if it were a normal year. We encourage every team to do as many parts of the challenge as they can while staying safe and having fun. Talk it through with your team and decide what would be best for your particular situation. Team registration with FIRST is mostly the same as in years past. Coaches must be registered as Lead Mentor 1, pass youth, pass youth Protection Program Screening, and complete the Consent and Release Form at firstinspires.org. A second adult must also be registered as Lead Mentor 2 and complete the Screening and Consent Forms. As usual, teams are limited to a maximum size of 10 students. The only change to this process is that parents must register their students online at firstinspires.org, as many teams have been doing for years. Starting this year, FIRST has eliminated the paper option, so paper rosters and paper consent forms will no longer be accepted. As usual, First Mid Atlantic will manage registration for the tournament and will collect event registration fees. The fee is much reduced compared to in person events. Registration for the Philadelphia FLL tournament will be open no later than January 15th on the First Mid Atlantic website and will close on March 1st. When you register, you will need to indicate which judging streams you'll participate in. Remember that you'll need to select at least two and you'll indicate whether you will participate in robot matches. These selections cannot be changed once registration closes on March 1st. Recruiting and training the right number of volunteers and scheduling the judging, judging sessions will be extra complicated for the event organizers this year because different teams will be participating in different combinations of events. Therefore, the selections you make at registration become firm commitments once registration closes and your team must follow through and participate in all the areas they selected in order to be considered for any award. Now, one perk of the remote event is that we will be able to expand event capacity to accommodate all eligible teams. So you don't need to race to register. We'd rather you take a few weeks at the start of the season to decide which areas you'd like to compete in so that your team is confident in its selections. Uh, here's a special note for School District of Philadelphia teams that are administered by Paula Don. If you designate Paula as your team administrator on your first dashboard, she can pay your registration fees for you. As usual, school district teams will meet outside of their regular school day in order for the teacher to be paid for coaching, and 30 EC hours are available per team. You'll need to submit timesheets through a Google form that Paula will share with you. If you have any questions about the tournament or the season plan in general, feel free to leave them in the comments here on YouTube, or you can email questions to contact at roboticscoalition.org.